This is a radio telescope. Actually, it's only one-tenth of a radio telescope. It's collecting light from the sky just like any telescope, but it's looking at radio light. Our eyes can't see radio light, but if we can build telescopes that can see radio light, we can learn about the universe by observing radio light the same way we can learn about the universe by observing optical light. This is a 25 meter Kitt Peak Long Baseline Observatory dish, part of an array of dishes that make up one telescope spanning over 3,000 kilometers. It's part of a network that's called the Long Baseline Observatory, or the LBO. It was constructed in the, in the early 1990s, and it consists of 10 dishes that are identical to this one, 25 meters in diameter that stretch all the way on the Earth from St. Croix in the Caribbean to Mauna Kea in Hawaii, and one of the stations is up here on Kip Peak. We didn't come here today just to look at it from the outside. We're actually going to crawl up inside and walk on the dish. So let's go. Radio telescopes work much in the same way optical telescopes do. Radio light coming down from the sky hits the surface of the dish here, reflects back upwards, but starts to come to a focus. It hits the subreflector up there and reflects back down and hits the receiver. But radio light has a lot less energy than optical light, so there's an extra step involved. The receiver is also an amplifier, which boosts the strength of the signal from space and determines the frequency. After the light is amplified and we know the frequency, the signal is then sent to a computer. My name is Dwayne Clark and I work for National Radio Astronomy Observatory and I am a VLBA specialist and I've been doing this job for oh, about uh, 25 years. What happens is, is that there's a, a, a digital back end and we record the data with that and it's recorded on hard disks and they're housed in a, a disk pack and there are eight disks per pack and some of the largest ones are 32 terabytes. And when those are full, we uh, package those up and we send those by FedEx to Socorro, New Mexico, where the data is then correlated and made into uh, images. We usually have to send about a pack a day, uh, goes. And so we're often with the FedEx guys, and uh, so the fastest way the data gets, uh, gets uh, processed is, is how long it takes FedEx. Thanks to LBO, we're getting a better and better view of our galaxy. We're still a long way away from having a complete map of the Milky Way, but we're starting to get a really good picture of our corner of our galactic home. Without radio astronomy and without very long baseline interferometry, that wouldn't be possible. That's why LBO and VLBI are so important to this fascinating frontier in astronomy.